Today's topics, do you need a crochet or knitting subscription box? A Lisa Frank make along, buttons, a finished tiny daisy cardigan, and so much more yarny content. More than we've had in months, friends. Hi friends, welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. Oh my word, do we have so much to talk about today and I don't know how much time we have, so we have to dive right in, okay? I just put the baby in the crib. Proof of baby. It is 9.06 a.m. on a Wednesday, so you will see this on Saturday. And I have more things to talk about with y'all than I have had in a long time. Like a long, long time. Normally, the way we work is we do like finished objects and then works in progress and then um, any kind of happy mail and then life updates. And it's all going to be jumbled up today, but I promise there will be a common thread. We're going to go by topics instead of finished objects and whips because it just makes more sense in my brain because we have so much to talk about. And who knows how long the baby will sleep. He is a little better this morning, but he's been pretty fussy <laughs> because we were supposed to be trying to wean him off of the Pepsid that he's taking and that did not go well at all. So he's back on his medicine as of this morning and he's a little happier. But yesterday, I swear, he was like a Velcro baby and he spit up like a million times. So the f if you are looking for me anywhere on the interweb, you can find me as the Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram. That is where I am most active. I am the Cozy Cottage on Ravelry. We do have a Ravelry group for this podcast. And any questions, comments, concerns, anything to say about the podcast specifically, please email me at the Cozy Cottage Crochet at gmail.com. Looking for my water. <laughs> it is like 90 degrees outside already. It's 9 a.m. What's 90 in Celsius? 30 something, 30, 33 degrees, something like that. It's so hot. So I don't know how long this sweater is going to stay on, <laughs> but we'll talk about this sweater in a few minutes. The first thing we have to talk about today is crochet and knitting subscription boxes. Now I was sent a crochet box and a knitting box from the company Hooks and Needles to review and show to y'all. I'm going to show you everything in the crochet and knitting box, but you should know that every box is different. So what I show you will not necessarily be what you get. Every month they have a different box with different projects. I have never had a crochet or knitting subscription box of any kind. This is more akin, I think, to that other company that used to exist. And now I can't even remember the name, but they had a bunch of yarn and then they went out of business. <laughs> but they had like a crochet or a knitting and like a yarn subscription that you could get every single month. Um, it's, this is not like a hand dyed uber expensive fancy yarn kind of a thing. This is I think much more accessible to a lot of people um, especially if you don't have like a Joanne Fabrics or a Michaels or something like that in your area where you can access yarn. So let me show you. This is the knitting box. It comes just like this from Hooks and Needles. So the knitting box is pink for this month. I don't know if it's always pink but the crochet box is green. And we'll do crochet first because crocheting is great. This says a whirl of spring colors in your hands. I really like the box actually. I definitely will be using this box. Ooh, dropping everything. <laughs> um, to store some bits and bobs in. So what you get in this box is you get what they call a magazine. It's a pattern booklet. You get yarn and notions and needles to make any project that is in here. So in the crochet box specifically, it has darning needles, it has crochet hooks, it has some stitch markers and a really cute little wooden ten. It has a zipper because one of the projects needs a zipper. And then the crochet box specifically has three balls of this yarn. This is a 50 gram ball, so you get 150 grams of 97% merino wool, 3% viscose or nylon. And this is a worsted weight yarn. It's actually like, what is the word for this? Tweed. <laughs> I was going to say heathered. It's not heathered. It's tweed. You see all the little nips? I have a special affinity for tweed yarn. I love the look of tweed yarn. And have I ever bought any? 
no, <laughs> but someday I'm going to make a tweed sweater and just be delighted by that. I really like this yarn. I don't know truthfully if it's going to end up in the project <laughs> that they sent me, but I really like the blue. This is very much my color palette and I love that it's tweed and it is super soft. My skin is very sensitive to this type of itchiness and it's not soft. Like I could wear this around my neck and this would be enough to make a cowl or a hat. What I like is that you get three patterns. So something I've noticed in crochet boxes or things of that nature is you usually get a pattern or you get a crochet and a knitting pattern. This has three patterns based on skill level. So the first one is a bottle holder and that is their beginner level pattern. And it has not just a pattern, detailed pictures on how you do this. So very much totally fine for a beginner to use, in my opinion. This is what the final object looks like that you could make with that yarn. And obviously you don't have to use that yarn, <laughs> that you could use any yarn in your stash. The second pattern is an intermediate and it is an urban crossbody bag, which y'all know how I feel. Do you know how I feel about fanny packs? <laughs> I love that the fanny pack got rebranded as a crossbody bag. Come on, y'all have been around long enough to know it is a fanny pack. And just because we're wearing it across our chest does not make it less of a fanny pack. I actually kind of like them. I just cannot believe this is one of the things that has gotten a resurgence in our current generation. Um, so this is an intermediate pattern and it has a kind of a puff stitch and it has a lining or no, it has a zipper. You put a zipper in. This is the one you need the zipper for. So this is what the squares look like. I actually really like that. And then see if I can find it. This is what the finished project looks like. That is really cute. Like, and it reminds me of Kalisha just did kind of her own granny style crossbody bag with made out of granny squares that were similar to this. Um, but these I think are a little bit bigger. But yeah, it's really lovely. I kind of want to make it. I don't know if, do I want to make a tweed crossbody bag? I don't know, but I really like that pattern. And then it has an advanced pattern, which this one is the most impressive to me of all of them. It's called a boho makeup pouch. And again, the pattern has words as well as pictures for the entire thing. There is, you make, it looks like you make a bunch of squares but you end up with a boxed bag. Isn't that crazy? And you put a zipper in this one too. I should love to see the zipper. It's closed. They give you two zippers. It's like if both of them need a zipper, do they give you two zippers? Yes, they do. And they give you black zippers because that matches this yarn better. That is ingenious. So I have never even considered making a boxed crochet bag like that. That's kind of fabulous to me. And I actually do need a makeup bag. <laughs> so I kind of want to make that too, which is crazy. I have no interest in making a bottle holder because I don't use a bottle. I use a giant 40 ounce mom juice tumbler <laughs> that holds water and keeps it cold. But I really, I want to make that. Like, I think I'm going to try to make that because I'm very much in the phase of like, I just need to make something to create. I need to create. And I don't want to be bogged down by pattern writing. I don't want to be bogged down by just the expectations that I have put on myself that are just too much for me to handle right now. I just want to make something. I just want to create something because that is what is feeding my energy. That is why I made the daisy cardigan. So two out of three patterns I want to make, starting with that one. And then this, the construction on this is just fascinating to me. So I kind of want to make that too. Also in this, you get a recipe and there's a cinnamon cookie recipe in this, which sounds very yummy to me. And then it has, what else does it have? It has a crochet glossary. I really like it. The crochet box specifically, I really like. Um, these boxes are, I believe, $33, which for three patterns and zippers and crochet hooks and stitch markers and darning needles and yarn, especially merino nylon yarn made in Portugal, 
I think that that is a really good deal. And if you live somewhere where you're, you just can't access this kind of thing, or if you do live somewhere, like I live right next to a Joanne Fabrics. They're, oh, I'm terrified they're going to close, but I live very close to one. But I would never have thought to make a crossbody bag. And I certainly would not have thought to make a makeup kit. That's just not like I make wearable stuff. So I'm quite impressed with the crochet box. I will say, I want to show you the crochet hook. They give you two five millimeter crochet hooks. Uh, I actually, they're, they're very lightweight. I like it because it's a, it's not an, it's not an inline hook. It's the one that's like rounded, not the one that's kind of squared off. I don't like the squared off crochet hooks very much for me personally. It's pretty comfortable. It's kind of small and it's got wood around it. So it kind of is warming your hands. I do like the crochet hook a lot. So, I mean, I would totally pay $33 for that because I'm going to make two projects out of this and they don't look to be that extensive or that involved. And I, let me tell you, I have never put a zipper in something. Not, uh, not in crochet or anything. I have never put a zipper in something. So that will be an exciting adventure <laughs> to do. Let me show you the knitting box and then I'll give you some thoughts. So the knitting box is the same thing. It says yarn full dreams begin here. And it has three patterns and it has everything you need to make the patterns. So for the knitting patterns in the knitting box, it has a small purse and I actually will be making this specifically because I know someone who will like it. It's for Nova. She loves a little purse. Once upon a time, Kalisha sent her a little like crochet granny purse that she found at a thrift store and she uses that thing all the time. She loves to put things in things. And so making her a little crossbody bag, this is the easy pattern. I am quite sure I could whip this up no problem. It looks just like knits and pearls. Isn't all knitting knits and pearls? Yes. But yeah, I've, it's adorable. The second pattern, which is an in, intermediate pattern, is a book or, or tablet sleeve. And it has, are these cables? I bet they are. I don't love knitting cables, but maybe you love knitting cables. I don't know. Where is it's really pretty. I have made a crochet tablet sleeve, a laptop sleeve once for someone as a gift. That's really pretty. And I'm sure you could just keep going if you wanted it to be bigger and it would be easy to adjust. And then there is the advanced level pattern is a knitting bag, which is like a little purse. Adorable. I don't believe the recipe of the month. Oh, this is a different recipe. <laughs> I would have thought it would be the same recipe, but no, this is a cozy apple crumble. That looks yummy. That's great. And it has a knitting glossary as well. So in this one, for the knitting one, you get the same darning needles. You get the same stitch markers in the little tin. Um, and from what I understand, you get different notions. So you get everything you need to make the project and then you get something different every month. So like the stitch markers, you wouldn't get that the next month, you would get something else. It has the buttons you need for both the tablet sleeve and the purse. They're cute little wooden buttons. And then it has the knitting needles and it has this yarn, which is called Harvest Moon. It is 100% pure new wool and you get 200 grams of this. This is itchy yarn. <laughs> Like this is not something you would wear next to your skin unless you were really, really like not sensitive at all. In fact, there is even a little bit of vegetable matter in here, which I love. It's really rustic. I don't know how well, oh, that's showing up perfectly. You can see the plies. It's very plump. You get 200 grams of yarn and you may be like, oh, what I would want to make something to wear with that. But this will be perfect for a purse because it will hold up. It'll hold up so much better. And I believe that this is not, this is not super wash at all. So it will be sticky. It would be perfect for color work. So my only complaint, and I have actually talked to them on hooks and needles about this already, is I don't love these. <laughs> and you know, if you've ordered anything, these knitting needles are like, 
this, what size is this? A 5.5 millimeter. The cable is kind of stiff. They're not very pointy. The joins are a little grabby and catchy. And also I, I don't like knitting with bamboo usually. So I complained about the knitting needles specifically. And, but I also understand that sourcing things because you have to have everything that you need to make a project in the box that sourcing things is pretty expensive. Um, and so he told me that they were actually working on trying to find a different supplier perhaps for their knitting needles. So that's really my only complaint about both of these boxes is these specific knitting needles. But if you knit already, I am sure you have your own needles. If you are a beginner, you may find that these needles are frustrating to use. But as far as everything else in the box is concerned, I was quite impressed and you will get to see me talk about this before, not because they're telling me to, but because I am going to make the projects. I'm going to make Nova that little pouch, the little purse pouch, and I'm going to make for sure the crossbody bag, maybe or maybe not with that yarn. I haven't decided yet. And I kind of want to make the makeup bag as well. Although I would have to figure out how to put a lining in it. Although that's not hard, right? You can do anything you want in crafting. And the knitting box is the same price as the crochet box, I believe it is $33. And I asked them, I was like, so what kind of, does the yarn change with the seasons? And so you get different yarn in every single box. I basically had like a list, a bunch of questions because <laughs> I'm obnoxious. I'm not just gonna be like, here's a thing. I wanna know more information. So the yarn changes every single box, you get a different yarn. You also get different patterns every single time and there are wearables included. So it's not, you're obviously not gonna make a sweater because you're not gonna get a sweater's quantity of yarn for $30, but there are things you can wear, maybe a shawl, maybe a cowl, a hat, things like that, fingerless mittens. There are different projects you make every time as well as a different recipe. The yarn itself does not necessarily change seasonally. So this, like I said, is 100% wool. Like that is rustic yarn. And that over there was 97% merino. So occasionally they do a seasonal box where you may get a blend of like cotton in the summer or bamboo or something like that. But overall, it's not necessarily based around the season because the projects are smaller and because they plan these so far in advance. So I was honestly really impressed. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. I'm trying to shove this back in the box and the knitting needles are stabbing me. I was really impressed. And I'm not just saying that because they sent me this to review. I really sat down and looked in depth at these and then I wrote him an email back and I was like, here's my questions. And then they were so kind and like followed up, gave me more information, answered every question that I had. And I, I really like it. It just depends on what you're looking for. So if you are the type of person who only wants to make things in hand dyed yarn, um, or you have a specific type of project that you like to make, you don't want to be surprised, right? Like you like to pick out your pattern for say a giant crochet shawl, and you like to pick out the yarn specifically for that, then this box is not for you. But if you wanna be surprised, if you want to have something show up on your doorstep that just sparks some creativity and maybe gives you the idea of a project that you would never have thought to make for yourself, for example, a crossbody bag, <laughs> never. I swear to you, I would never have thought to make that. But now that I see it, I really want to. <laughs> then this box is for you. If you have a huge stash <laughs> and you're just overwhelmed by the amount of yarn that you have, you don't necessarily need to add any more yarn, right? But if you, like I said, live far away from a place where you can get yarn accessible to you and you have, you know, like decision fatigue, like what am I going to make? Or if you just want to expand your skill set, then I think this box is for you because you could start, say you've never crocheted before. You could start on the easy pattern and follow that with the picture tutorials that they have. And then using yarn from stash or whatever, you could make the second project and make the third project and really expand your skill set. For example, I will be expanding my skill set because I have never put a zipper in anything. Can you believe I've been crocheting for like, how old am I? 35, 20? I've been almost 10 years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've been knitting for longer than that, but I would say nine years probably I've been crocheting at least I have never put a zipper in anything. I have also never lined anything. That's crazy. That's crazy, y'all. 
so yeah, I, I don't, I promise you my reviews, no matter what, if people send me things for free or not, I will always tell you my actual opinion. And I don't think this box is for everyone. Um, but I do think this box is for people who want access to some yarn, have a budget because $33 is not, I mean, that's one skein, right? Of hand dyed yarn. And you could make, you get three patterns and enough yarn to make a project and the notions and it's shipped to you. So the price point to me is very reasonable. So yeah, I think, I think if you're looking for some inspiration, this is the way to go. And one thing that I liked is you don't actually have to sign up. A lot of subscription things that I've seen are like, you can sign up for three months at a time, or you have to sign up for a year at a time, and you can sign up for longer periods of time on this box if you want to, but you don't have to. You can only purchase one month if you want, and just to test it out. So I will leave a link directly down below to Hooks and Needles. Check it out. I think it's great. I really think it's great. I'm going to be working on these projects. I actually wanted to start that little knitted bag for Nova already, but I've been restraining myself to show you, to show you. I don't know that I can make it in this scratchy yarn because she's going to want it to be pink. I'm almost positive she's going to want it to be pink, but I will ask her because you know, she has a lot of opinions about everything. <laughs> so that's my review of the Hooks and Needles subscription box. I honestly was... I don't know what I was expecting, but I was really impressed. And I was impressed with their communication with me <laughs> when I went back and forth with them via email several times. Speaking of Nova, the second thing we have to talk about is her finished Daisy cardigan. Now I showed you in the last episode, my Daisy cardigan that I finished. I have since packed that up and shipped it to a lovely viewer of this podcast called Melinda. Hi Melinda. Um, who's going to wear it because she lives in a place far colder than here and it's totally her style. So I'm delighted that it is going to live with someone who will appreciate the amount of effort <laughs> that I put into that sweater. But Nova's sweater is finished. I can't wear my sweater and show you hers, but if you go on my Instagram page, I have a reel where I took a bunch of pictures with us. We had a mini photo shoot before I mailed it out. And she, oh my God, it's so cute. This is the back. She's, it's just so cute. And it was so much easier to finish because it's only eight squares total. <laughs> so I have been saying for a long time that she's not a knit worthy person because she's hot all the time. She just runs hot like my husband and she's sticky, <laughs> like, but she begged for this. And I think maybe she is a knit worthy person after all, because she's been wearing this nonstop. I made it in acrylic because I'm not about to give her wool, right? But she picked these colors herself. She was very specific and adamant that she wanted the middle to be blue, the inside to be purple, and the outside to be pink. I did Karen Simply Soft Party Yarn, which has sparkle, as you can see. So what I did is I made the eight squares. And then this is the Daisy Cardigan pattern by All About Ami, who is uh, Stephanie Lau. I did not follow her pattern for this. I just followed this, this square pattern. And then what I did is I added more rows of double crochet over here to make a shoulder. And I added rows of double crochet in between the back panels so that I could make a little neck opening for her. Because I knew that if I just put these two together and there was like a, she was, it was going to bother her because she's very sensitive to things like that. So I knew it needed to have a neck opening. So I added some rows of double crochet before I seamed the back together. I added some rows of double crochet up top for the shoulders just to make it hang better on her. And then I did just some ribbing for the bottom, crochet ribbing. And I did one row of single crochet around the sleeves and around the neck. So that's her color. It's adorable. It's just really stinking adorable. <laughs> so if you want to make it, basically, you just kind of have to wing it. I did eight squares, two for the front, two for the, four for the back. I think... One, two, four extra rows of double crochet on the back and four on the top of the arms. And it's adorable. God, she's wearing it all the time. She really wears it like it's probably been done for a week and a half. She's worn it six or seven times. Not all day, obviously, because it's 90 degrees. But she puts it on, she twirls around, and then she it just makes me want to make her things. 
I really want to make her, she's into string at the moment. Kids are weird. She's into like, I have this like little piece of colorful rope that she found and she's like constantly tying, tying, wrapping things up <laughs> in it and saying that they're tangled or they're locked or whatever. So I'm thinking of taking the leftover yarn from this cardigan because I have most more of the purple than anything because I only have one ball of blue and I have a tiny bit of pink left and just making her like a long double crochet strip that's maybe like this wide that she can do whatever she wants with would be like an imagination toy. She'll call it a wand. She'll call it a, you know, like a fairy waver thing. She'll call it a string and tie people up. <laughs> well, I think that would be fun to make her. Speaking more of Nova. <laughs> As I said, this is going to be, this is not finished objects whips. We're talking in topics. So first we have the subscription box. Now we have Nova and her daisy cardigan. We also have a project for Nova that I kind of forgot that I was making. And it is a floor poof. It was one of those things that I suddenly decided I had to do when I was pregnant before the house renovation was done. I guess it was like a nesting thing. I just decided that I needed to make Nova a Tunisian crochet floor poof. And could I have bought one for like way cheaper at Target? Yes, because I had to buy the foam to sit on as well as the yarn, which takes a lot. <laughs> and then I tried to use a pattern I kind of loosely followed a pattern from Tony Lipsy's Tunisian crochet book. And then I totally went off kilter as I normally do and made my own thing using Tunisian knit stitch. And I had a evening last week where I think it was Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday night last week. It was not, the kids were in bed really early. Josiah was in bed really early and I decided to take the time I haven't had time like that in a long time. And just go through my whip box. And I pulled everything out. I organized it. I put a bunch of stuff, not away, but in a box to be put away <laughs> in my yarn stash whenever I get around to that, of finished projects, old things that were just hanging in there from an entire year's worth of being pregnant and having a baby and et cetera, et cetera. And I found this and I was like, oh my gosh, I was making a floor poof. And so I have made some significant progress on it. I really want to get it finished because it's a huge, it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> it is physically huge. <laughs> so it's living in this giant bag that was sent to me by my lovely friend Amy. It's from her yarn store, Bee Woolen, and it is the only bag, perhaps, <laughs> that is big enough to hold all of this, because I have a huge ball of Bernat blanket yarn in here. I have the book that my friend Amy also sent me, that is the Tunisian Crochet Handbook by Tony Lipsy. I gotta see if I can find, I didn't mark, I don't think, the floor poof, but where is it? Nowhere, of course. Nowhere. No. You will see when I'm done with it, what I'm making. So she uses a different yarn and the, she has a wonderful stitch pattern for her floor poof. And I started making her stitch pattern and realized it did not show up in this blanket yarn at all. So I had to adjust. So before the baby was born, I had finished one panel. This is the top panel of the floor poof. As you can see, it's Tunisian knit stitch. It is very dense fabric. Like I am trying to stretch this and it's barely moving. This will theoretically be big enough <laughs> for the top. When I pulled this back out, I finished the second panel, which I want to say I went this way. So I did this much. So this is the bottom. And what I am working on now is taking a lot longer because it is much bigger. It is, oh, I can't get this back in here. The strip around the outside that I'm going to sew to connect the top and the bottom is long. <laughs> it's very long. It might actually be too long, but if it is in fact too long and I end up with excess once I've sewn it, I may just make like a little handle for the edge of the floor poof. So this is slightly more stretchy. I guess my gauge is a little bit looser. I'm not sure, but I'm just estimating. I think that I have to get to nine inches on this and I don't know how many inches this is, but I'm gonna guess four. I'm gonna guess four, that's probably right. I don't know that I have a tape measure over here. 
So yeah, I'm trying to do just like one row on this a day because it takes a surprising long time to get this many stitches in Tunisian in blanket yarn. And this kills my arm. Just the manhandling that I have to do <laughs> with this giant yarn and this tiny Tunisian crochet hook. It's not that tiny, it's a 6.5 millimeter, but this is my crochet hook. I am using my ever trusty Denise Interchangeable Tunisian Hooks, which I've talked about before. I love them. They are the only Tunisian crochet hooks that I want to use. They are lightweight, they are fabulous, and they make my Tunisian crochet experience much more enjoyable. So Nova is very determined to have a floor poof. She saw me working on it and was like, what is that? And then I told her, and then every day since then, she has asked me if I'm done making the thing to sit on. And I'm like, no. And then yesterday she was like, you're not done yet. And I was like, no, it takes a long time. And she goes, yeah, you take forever. <laughs> so I am working on Nova's Tunisian crochet floor poof. I really, I don't necessarily want to be working on that truly, but it's so close to being done. Like I got what, like five inches and some seaming and I already have the foam cut out sitting in our closet, my like closet in my room. So I just need to finish it. Also, she knows about it now. So she's never going to let it go. Never. So that is a project that I will diligently work on, I swear, <laughs> until it is finished. I don't know. We'll probably not get any work done on that tonight because I have a meeting tonight. But it has grown from zero to four inches in the last week. So that's something. Okay, that is the end of the Nova topic. The next topic we have to address is buttons. Buttons, buttons, buttons. I, you will remember, <laughs> finished this cardigan. This is the Mix and Match cardigan by Mina Phillips, made in Melt Your Eyeballs Hot Pink Yarn, which was dyed by my very lovely friend Maria. Hi, Maria. Uh, who used to have her own yarn dyeing company and now works for Olive and Two You, which is another yarn dyeing company in Florida. And I finished this. Did not add any buttons to it. I also finished, I think when I was pregnant, this grandpa cardigan, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. This is the super bulky grandpa cardigan. I did not make it in super bulky yarn. I made it in bulky yarn that I got at Rhinebeck two years ago. And I, this is version number two because I shrunk. I cannot, I still cannot believe I did that. I shrunk <laughs> version number one by putting it for five minutes in the dryer. I did not realize this wasn't super wash. This cardigan also had no buttons. I bought buttons for this pink cardigan and this one, like, you know, a year ago. And I never put them on. And then when I went to put the buttons on, cause I was like, I have a little bit of finishing energy. Let's just bust it out. The buttons are gone forever. Where they are, I have no idea. Maybe Nova pilfered them, maybe, uh, a gremlin came into our house and took them away from me. Maybe they got lost in the move. Maybe they got thrown out by accident. I have no idea. So I chose, it's this button. I was like, no, but I had the little card, right? So I had like two buttons of this kind. And I was like, I can't make, I need six. I went online, the button doesn't exist. And I was in despair. And Joanne said it didn't exist. And so I went to Joanne sadly to find different buttons and the buttons do exist and they had them <laughs> which is crazy why were they not online why could i not find them on their website with the SKU and the code and the <laughs> anyways i got to pay for the buttons twice which is lovely so this one this is the button i have six of them i'm going to scoot back they are attached there are six buttons attached, and I did put backing buttons on these. And I will tell you what a backing button is in just a moment. Couldn't find the buttonhole. <laughs> Oops, I still can't find the buttonhole. I'm trying to cram this button through something that's not a buttonhole. A backing button is basically a small little button that gives the front button stability, and I may have put that backing button on too tight. So yeah, this is what it looks like when it's buttoned. Just like this. Perfect. 
I probably, it's very unlikely that I will wear this buttoned <laughs> because it's Florida. So this is norm. I could use an even smaller button for a backing button, honestly, but this is what I had. So that's what I used. So all six of these buttons have backing buttons and it just makes this a lot more stable. So I guess I have my sweater on cooking. So yeah, that's my mix and match cardigan. It is way too hot. I am dying y'all. Boiling, double, double, boil in trouble. Toil in trouble. <laughs> Can't even get my Shakespeare right. So yes, this has got buttons on it. Thank goodness. It is now finished, 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 except that I have to take a photo of it for Ravelry. That has not been done. Also, the grandpa cardigan, which I love y'all enough to put on and show you, even though it is bulky weight yarn. Oh my gosh. I can't wait for the three days in Florida that I can wear this because it is amazing. It now has buttons as well. It only has three buttons. Um, also very unlikely that I will wear this button. And I did not put backing buttons on this because... I didn't think it needed them. I feel like these are in a weird place. Truly. I feel like this button is in a weird place. Like, I don't know. It should be closer to here. But I did that on the first cardigan and it looked super weird. So I think maybe this cardigan doesn't need buttons at all. Maybe it needs like a bro like a shawl pin or something to keep it closed. But I'm probably not going to wear it closed anyway, so it doesn't matter. And now it has buttons and it looks finished. <gasps> Too hot. So yes, oh, this cardigan is everything I wanted it to be the first time before I felted it. I still can't believe I did that. So those are two technically finished objects. Even though they were finished before, they have not had buttons for a year. What else do we have to talk about? Because there's more. There's more, you guys. I have actually three more projects to show you. And I don't want to get your hopes up because this is like, I've had like a burst of energy I think because my period came back for the first time since the baby was born. And there's like a week, week and a half usually for me in that cycle where I have big get stuff done energy. And it coincided with the first quiet week I think I've had in months. I had zero night meetings last week, which I've, I cannot remember the last time that happened. I have three this week. <laughs> so I actually had some time to just be a person, which I have not had in a long time. And so I got a fair amount done and I, it feels really, really good. I feel creative again, which is nice. So the next topic is we're going to have a Lisa Frank make along. I have wanted to do this for a long time, over a year now, possibly two years. So huh, this will obviously be entered. The rule, it goes from now, whatever day you're seeing this, until the end of July. So you have about two months to make something. The only rule is it has to be either neon or you have to relate it to Lisa Frank somehow. And I want some shenanigans, y'all. So if you're making something black, <laughs> if you're making something brown, then I need a story from you. I need some shenanigans about how this relates to Lisa Frank. You can make anything you want. You can use any project that is in your stash, even if it only has to have buttons put on it, because I want you to have creative finishing energy too. So if you have something that you've been working on, just not like haven't been making progress, pull out that whip. It is part of your stash. Use it. There, You can do any craft. You can do crochet, knitting, uh, spinning, weaving, anything related to fiber arts. Just do it. I have a thread already open in the Ravelry group, which is linked down below. That is where prizes will be drawn from. There will also be some patron-specific prizes that will be drawn from my patron-only Slack channel. And the only problem I foresee is that Instagram has taken away the ability to see recent posts on hashtags. So you literally can't find them. Um, so we can't really use a hashtag on Instagram because it's not, I won't see it. So if you want to enter for a prize, you've got to go to the Ravelry group or you need to actually physically tag me on Instagram with your post. Otherwise, I'm not going to see it. So I'm really excited. <laughs> there will be some prizes. This is the first time we've done anything like this in probably two years. 
because it's just been it's been wild around here. It's probably going to continue to be wild, but maybe it won't. The baby is eight and a half months old now, so hopefully it will get easier from here. I have started a project already for my Lisa Frank Hallett is living in this Christmas bag that my lovely friend Ella from No Catchy Name Crochet sent to me, oh, I mean, years ago, years ago, she sent me this bag. And when I was at Joann's rebuying the same buttons for the Mix and Match cardigan, I got attacked by a neon yarn. And it has been a long time since I have bought any yarn from Joann's or from anywhere, honestly. And it is this. <laughs> it's a big twist, 100% acrylic. It's called Rave. They have other colors of Brave. What color is this? Super Beach. They also had a orange and yellow one. And then they had like an electric blue lime green one. There were three balls of this yarn and I had some coupons and it was on sale. So I bought all three. This they say is a worsted weight yarn. No, <laughs> not a chance. This is much more like a bulky weight yarn, but I haven't actually worked with an acrylic like this. It is a single ply. It's just like a twist. It's literally just fluff that's twisted. So it's pretty exciting. And I, it made me want to create something. And I saw it and I was like, whoa. And I touched it and I petted it and then I put it back on the shelf and then I walked away. And then I made it like four aisles down the path and I came back and I grabbed all three of these because it wanted it made me want to create something which because I have not had that feeling in so long I was like I have to honor this feeling and I have to just make something and this is what I mean when I talked about the crochet and knitting subscription box and this specifically I need to make something just for the sake of making it not because I have expectations about what it's going to be not because I have to write a pattern for it Y'all know I have so many patterns that are just waiting to be written and I can't deal with that right now. I just need to make something for the sake of making it. And so I am. And originally I was like, I'll just make a granny triangle shawl. But then I was like, why do that when I can make a just feel better shawl in neon yarn? And the just feel better shawl is a pattern by my lovely friend Kalisha of the Quirky Monday Craft Cast. I have actually made one in already in fingering weight yarn, which is what the pattern calls for. I made it in lovely like greens, pinks. Ugh, it's so pretty, I love that shawl. And this, it's like an asymmetrical granny triangle. So you would end up wearing it this way probably. Ooh, this is how much I have left of ball number one. And then I have two more. So it's gonna be pretty big. I may just go until I think it's big enough or go until I run out of yarn, I haven't decided. I love it, I really love it. Look at how wonderful these stitches look in this yarn. And it's just orange to pink, back to orange. That's what the whole shawl is going to be. I have a progress keeper on here that I got at Rhinebeck. It's a panda. I thought that was very Lisa Frank. And I have one of the first stitch markers I ever made for myself. Also, thinking that this is Lisa Frank, it's a donut. <laughs> a sprinkled chocolate donut. So I wanted it to be... I just love it. I swatched with a couple different hook sizes because you know, it says it's a worsted weight yarn. It is not, it is not a worsted weight yarn. So I swatched with like, it says a 4.5 and then I was like, mm, no way. So I did a 5.5 then I was like, no. And then I did a six and then I was like, no. And then I did 6.5 millimeter hook. <laughs> so that's the hook size I'm using in this yarn. And I am use, I was starting to use my trusty Clover Amours. You know, I love my Clover Amours. They're my favorite crochet hooks. I will die on that hill forever. I really love them, except for the 6.5 millimeter hook. When it goes, the six millimeter hook, totally fine. 6.5 millimeter hook, they switched to plastic and I truly hate this hook. And I could not figure out why, but I was like, this is the gauge that I want. So I need to use this hook and it'll be fine. And I've made some stuff with this hook before, but nothing like a shawl that is big. And I just hated working on it and it hurt my hand. And I can't think, I'm like, why does it hurt my hand? I have a plastic Clover Amour eight or nine millimeter hook that doesn't hurt my hand. It's fine. 
So finally I was like, okay, this is not, I hate, I hate working on this and this is not appropriate for a Just Go Better shawl. So I went online to Amazon and I was like, what can I get? I need a metal crochet hook. And I found this tulip hook. It is a tulip etimo red hook. It's 6.5 millimeters. This is a little box that came in. This is what it looks like. It's, I mean, very similar to the Clover Amores. But look at this. The Clover one is like one centimeter longer. And this is also like one centimeter longer than the six millimeter Clover Amore hook in metal. And I think that's why I hate it. It doesn't fit my hand properly because this, I love, I love it. I've crocheted half the shawl in this and it made me happy. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, <laughs> but not use it. I'm gonna use this one instead. And it has, it has like an ergonomic thumb grip and I know people like to hold like this. I tend to choke my hooks <laughs> like this. So my thumb is actually always at the tip right up here. It's never down here in the thumb grip. It's up here. That's how I hold my hook. It's just how I crochet. I don't know why. But you know, if you have a problem with the plastic Clover Amore 6.5 millimeter hook, try the Tulip. I got mine on Amazon and it was here in one day. And it's making my experience much happier, which is good because it's a just feel better shawl. I do not want to spend my time hating making it. So that's my project, my current project for the Lisa Frank Cal. Is this magical neon? I'm so happy. So get out your neon yarn, y'all. Comment below, let me know what you're gonna be making. Go to the Ravelry group. There is a whip slash FO thread already open. If you want to be eligible for prizes, that is where you need to go. Oh, I have been talking for 45 minutes. This is, <laughs> this is an exciting long episode. I have not had any caffeine despite all evidence to the contrary. I just got a solid stretch of sleep last night. From 9 p.m. until 1, I slept when the baby woke up. And then he ate, he went back to sleep. And so I got from 1.30 to 6 or maybe 5.45. And that feels like miraculous. I feel like a new person <laughs> for getting a little bit of sleep. So I have two more projects to show you. One is a sock that I was working on and one is my crochet memories blanket. Let's do the sock first. You saw this sock last time. It had a little bit of progress. I actually finished one. I have not started the second one yet because I had a meeting on Monday, Monday night this week. And not only a meeting, I had a wedding to officiate. So I left the house at 4.30 exactly when my husband got off work. I drove to the beach. I officiated a wedding. They started early. So then I had a half an hour or maybe 40 minutes to hang out in my car before the next meeting started to knit on this. And then during the meeting, it was not a meeting I had to talk much or participate in really. I was just there to like absorb information. I knitted the whole time and I finished it. I finished a sock. This is where I was last time. And so in, I probably was like here at the start of Monday night, I did the entire thing and a toe. I finished a sock, you guys. This yarn is, was from my dear friend, Amanda. It is a Christmas sock yarn from Long Dog, Long Dog Yarn in the Colorway Traditions. It's 70% merino, 20% nylon, 5% sparkle. And it has a sparkly mini that's attached as well. So do this the same way I make all of my socks. Cast on 64 stitches, do 15 rounds of two by two rib. Did, it worked until I had six inches from the top to here. I put in a fish lips kiss heel. I did the foot and I did a rounded toe from mm, Knitting Next Pack's two at a time vanilla sock recipe. That's just the toe that works for my foot the best. I am going to have to actually make a lot of socks. Not necessarily the longer ones, but I need to make myself many more pairs of shorty socks, which are like my little ankle socks because I like to sleep in them every night. I wear a pair of handmade socks to sleep in. And I've started doing that again now that my toes are finally healed from toe surgery and my feet are not swollen anymore from being pregnant. And so I've been wearing my socks again and they're much like the rest of my body, just a slightly different shape 
than they were before I had kids, specifically the second kid. My feet are still a size eight. Uh, my shoes fit me. It's not a big deal. But the shape of my foot, I feel like, has changed. And the socks do not fit properly. Like this part like slips down a little bit because this right here is too tight in most of the socks that I have in my drawer. So I actually have to go through my sock drawer and try on all my socks and be like, I guess these don't fit anymore. And I'll probably, they're all like really well loved and worn. Some of them still fit because they either had a looser gauge or maybe a different heel or something like that. So I have to see which ones still fit me. And then I'll probably give the ones that don't to my mom because she has a little bit smaller feet than me, as long as they fit her. And then I need to make myself some new shorty socks. I also, when I first started making shorty socks, really loved having a them really low on my ankle. So I would do like 12 rounds of ribbing and then like 10 or 12 rounds of stockinette. I decided I like, I like them to be a little bit higher, especially because I'm sleeping in them so much. I just like want them to be around my ankle a little more securely. So I want at least 15 rounds of ribbing and I was doing 15 rounds of stockinette, but I think I want 20. So yeah, I might have to make a new sock drawer for myself and hopefully my feet will stop changing sizes and shapes now that I'm done having children. <laughs> so I don't know, this is a half object. I have not cast on the second sock yet, but I'm very stinking proud to have this done. And what I have discovered is that I need more meetings where I can sit in it. <laughs> because then the project that lives in my mom bag will get work done. The last thing I have to show you is another project that I pulled out because I organized all of my whips and it is my crochet memories blanket. This is a pattern that I designed. It costs, there's a free video tutorial on my YouTube channel. If you go, I mean, you're already on my YouTube channel, but like if you go to my YouTube channel front page and scroll down a little bit, you'll see crochet tutorials and this pattern has a tutorial. If you want the written pattern with photos and instructions and all of that, then it's $1 on my Ravelry page. And it's living in a huge bag that my lovely friend, Caitlin, who is not a knitter or crocheter, but she sews, made for me years and years and years ago. And I have put on quite a few new squares since the last time you saw this. Here it is. I love it. It's join as you go corner to corner. Um, this stitch marker is marking my front side, although who would be confused? Look at the ends. <laughs> I have not woven in a single end. It is a little sheep with a sorting hat from Harry Potter. And how appropriate to have a sorting hat when I am sorting minis for every new square. So this is where I left off last time. These two squares had little stitch markers on them. I try to put a stitch marker on every single new square that I make between episodes. When I pulled this out, these already had stitch markers on them. I cannot tell you when I did them. I truly have no idea. It could have been, I have not touched this since long before he was born. So these were done. And then I have put on this square, this square, this square, this square, this square, and this square. That is one, two, three, four, five, six squares I have added. And if you count the two that were already done, that's eight squares. It's amazing. I'm just going around in a rectangle shape now. I was like putting them on all very haphazardly. It's fine. <laughs> I decided I don't need to be doing that. I can just go around in a line and it's totally fine. These two squares I totally added with the wrong hook size because I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook and these I used a four and did not even realize until randomly I was like, this seems like looser. I was not about to rip them out. It's a blanket, who cares? So yeah, I'm, I would like to put on a couple squares a week on this because I really enjoy it. I really like it. Each square takes about seven, for my gauge, probably seven grams of yarn. And I have all of these minis. These are the leftovers of the minis. Those are like four gram balls. But I have a bunch of these little 10 gram mini skeins. They were gifted to me by a lovely lady named Rochelle. And I have, you know, still like a fair amount, <laughs> probably 30 of them in here. 
So I'm going through them one by one and adding them. Once I am done adding all of those minis, I have, you know, a bunch of scraps of different kind of yarn in my stash that I will be going through and weighing and making sure I have enough to do a full square. I know lots of people are doing scrappy squares with these. So you just go until you run out of yarn and you add a new one. I want every single square to be an individual yarn. So it's, this looks, I'm just so happy with it. I'm so happy. So, so, so happy to have some like real progress to be made. So yeah, that's all. Oh my gosh, it's been 55 minutes. <laughs> that's all the yarn. That's all the yarn. That's more yarn than we've had. I don't even want to tell y'all how long it's been since we've had this much yarn content. Don't get your hopes up for next time, okay? I don't have two sweaters I can just slap buttons on and be like, they're finished. <laughs> But hopefully I will have more progress on that floor poof and more progress on my Just Feel Better shawl to show you. And I hope to be back in two weeks. As far as life goes, like I said, I had a quiet week for the first time in forever. That's not going to continue. This week had three, three night meetings, which is crazy. Then Monday's Memorial Day. So my husband is off work, which is really nice. But next week... Nova's babysitter is having foot surgery and so she will be gone for she says a week there's in my mind no way <laughs> like there's no way she can't even put weight on her foot for like five days I don't think so I'm expecting Nova to be home with me a lot which will be not great not great for us I did sign her up for pre-k3 she's still 10th on the waiting list she's been 10th on the waiting list for like seven weeks now so it does not look good that she's going to get into pre-k so i just don't know what to do i mean this is the theme in first since she's been born i do not know what to do about the child care situation it just feels impossible the baby it has his nine month doctor appointment in a few weeks and they wanted us to try weaning him off the pepsin before and so i did i dropped i did not drop his nighttime dose because <laughs> i want him to sleep i dropped his morning dose and he was okay for the first couple days and then he just started getting hiccups more and more and he started spitting up more and more. And yesterday, I swear he spit up like 20 times and he was so fussy. It smelled like stomach acid. So I'm sure it hurt him. So I just put him back on the medicine and I'm just going to make them like every time I call to get a refill, they're like, does he still need it? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, he's miserable. The poor kid. So hopefully today he will have a better time <laughs> get with his tum tum since he's had Pepsid. To help him and I feel like that's all that I have to tell you other than you should join Elisa Frank Mal I expect to see shenanigans if revelry is not your deal I don't know how you're gonna get your FOs and whips to me so try to join Ravelry if you can um, Ravelry is the place I get all my patterns pretty much so I try to use it frequently I have been going in and updating all of my FOs that have been just languishing forever I've been trying to add photos. I've added photos of a pair of socks, my daisy cardigan, a hat. It's just been waiting for like years, I feel like at this point. So I'm trying to work through some of that backlog um, and I will check in on the Ravelry thread as well. So if you're gonna join the Lisa Frank Mal, please leave me a comment below and let me know what you're doing. If you don't have a pattern yet, that's totally fine, but let me know if you're gonna join down below. And then if you're interested in the Hooks and Needles subscription box, it's the first link right down below, um, right under like the description. So try it out. And I will hopefully have a little knitted bag to show you <laughs> next time to show you that I have made for Nova and I will work on the crochet crossbody bag, but probably not until I am done with Nova's floor proof. So until I see you again, fingers crossed, it will be two weeks from now. Happy crafting, be kind to yourself and love you all so much. Bye, friends.